Okie dokie. Let's show you folks what I've been up to with the um, uh, Mega 65 keyboard. I'm just quickly post down so people know. I'm live now on twitch.tv slash Mega 65 Paul. Why make a 65 keyboard that we support for the Nexus 4 etc boards? Okie dokie. Let's see if anyone pops on. If not, that's alright. Okay, so a little bit of background before we dive in things. So there are a bunch of people who are using the, um, uh, the uh, Nexus board uh, or other boards to build their own Mega 65 compatible uh, hardware but at the moment you have to use a, a PS2 keyboard or otherwise right. Um, and also there's a secondary thing this is all yet to be decided but the FPGA is hard to get the one that we're using on the existing Mega 65 keyboard. So as a bit of an insurance policy for that, we have another keyboard design uh, that if we need to, we can talk to uh, our uh, hardware partners and say, hey, we can't get the FPGA for the keyboard. We know you can't make us more keyboards with that. Um, but here's another design for the keyboard that we know works. Uh, feel free to, to take it, uh, adapt it, modify it, or otherwise so that we can keep producing the machines and get them out to you folks so um, what we will what's the best way to do this so um, what you can see here is the open ROM rather than a, uh, a full boot because this is just on my bench top test setup with one of the, uh, the, with the first prototype of the, um, uh, the new keyboard uh, with a, an R3 board this is one I took out when I put the R3A board in my case uh, when the R3s came out and yeah the, so this board here for the keyboard so this is not the original keyboard this is the real keyboard out of uh, my Mega 65 all in bits while I'm making these things at the moment so, the the so that's the latest of PGA that runs the uh, the keyboard at the moment oh howdy folks um, let's see a couple of you uh, following in, hopefully let me, can let me know if the audio is, uh, is not uh, loud enough or anything and I can move the mic around just while I'm leaning around a little bit odd here. Um, so yes, this, this is the nuisance part, they're like two to four bucks when you can get them. Lead time at the moment, 90 weeks, and this is just nuts. Uh, so this is part of why we're looking at having that backup plan, as well as just for all the people who've got Nexus boards and things. Uh, so anyway, so we're familiar with that layout, we can see what's here it has a similar layer. Um, it's got some dodgy keycaps on it because it's what I had laying around. So leaving my keycaps on here uh, for the real one. But again, you could get a much better set of keycaps than what I've got here. You could even get uh, custom keycaps made up. Uh, there's a bunch of online places that it should be great if someone wanted to do that uh, and you know, have that design available for folks as they go along. Because uh, one of the things that I would like to see as well out of having the uh, you know the alternate keyboard for people with Nexus boards and that. We know a number of people uh, you know, aren't in the fortunate situation to be able to buy a full price complete Mega 65. Um, <laughs> hang on, someone's just saying, uh, what was someone saying here? Uh, Pitcairn was, oh, right, music is drowning out my voice. Okay, let me crank the music down. And I'll crank me up a little bit. Okay, how's that going? Um, was it completely impossible to understand or was it kind of okay? Because I can go back over things a bit uh, if there was stuff that people didn't catch. Um, just let me know. So anyway, how do you keep Canon uh, 64 and Tron 6502? So here is the bear. Um, PCB for the uh, this DIY keyboard. So not surprisingly, we've got. Oh, let's try and zoom in here a bit. See if this camera can be short-sighted enough. 
it's not doing too bad. So I like Will. Um, hey, Kehaf, great to see you. Um, I like PCBs that are self-explanatory. So we've got good silk screening here uh, that tells us where things need to go so you even know which keys are on where. So if you don't have keycaps on initially, uh, it's still usable. I might make those bigger uh, and move them a little bit further out so they're easier to see. Uh, for simplicity, I've put the full uh, Cherry MX style key holes in here for whether they've got LEDs or whether they've got um, diodes but you don't need key switches with diodes for this uh, because of the way that I have uh, designed uh, the board. So here's the back. So instead of having that big FPGA, what we have is it's six of these uh, um, IC uh, spots and they each take an I squared C IO expander. So they each have 16 lines available to them, like two or three bucks a piece. So they're pretty cheap. Um, and so with six of them, this is fine. Uh, that's enough to have a wire for every key. So we get N key rollover uh, for free without diodes. So in fact, if you had to put the diodes in, it would cost more because the diodes <laughs> incrementally cost more than uh, the little bit of price increase of having uh, you know, six of these chips for two or three bucks instead of a, a four dollar FPGA. So we're talking like twelve to eighteen dollars worth of chips instead of um, a four dollar FPGA which you can't get at the moment um, and then needing a bunch of diodes anyway that are basically going to bring that price up uh, to parity because of course in large volume the, the price of those chips comes down as well. Uh, so we've also got I get things around the right way so this is for the LEDs uh, for the uh, the power and the drive, and there's the resistors for those. For the, again, the hand assembly at home, I've tried to put everything hole through where I can. Um, the I/O expanders just aren't available in hole through, um, unfortunately, and they wouldn't fit anyway. But those chips are actually not too hard to hand solder because they're not pins underneath. You can drag solder and then wipe the excess away with them. Um, uh, solder, you know, desoldering braid, so that works quite well. Uh, the LEDs are a little bit fiddly to solder, um, but they actually kind of like sit into that spot, and so you can actually hand solder them down. I've hand soldered all the ones on uh, the board here. So yeah, some more resistors, um, the ten-pin hole-through connector, and <laughs> which worked out to be very fortunate when I was fixing bugs. A little GPIO header with a couple of spare pins because um, <laughs> very embarrassingly um, in my circuit you know, the schematic I hadn't connected the E key or the uh, the left arrow key uh, next to the one key in the design it was a little bit oops um, but that's why you do prototyping right uh, and so I was able to sort those out so what we might actually do then before we start playing with this thing is just unplug the one that I built up. So again, we've got the, uh, uh, the key switches. So I've just used the cheapest uh, fake cherry keys because I didn't want to spend a pile of money on this prototype. It also means that people, if you're building it at home, you can do the same thing. So I think it was like $25 Australian or something for enough keycaps for this. So I've used the black uh, linear ones for the main keys and then I've used blue ones that have got the tactile feel for the um, uh, the lock keys. Again, you don't need ones with diodes, you don't need ones with LEDs. You can just fit the two LEDs in the ones that you need to yourself. Um, <laughs> I can fit resistors better than that, but I had them purposely up, so that, cause that's the uh, I squared C bus. Howdy, other folks who've lurked along as well. Um, so, I could stick my oscill uh, oscilloscope probes onto those to debug what was going on. Uh, Non-working uh, dash KY, why would that be a problem? <laughs> yes, right. Um, yeah, like, who needs the E? Oh, sorry, and the, um, it was the, so it was the two keys that I hadn't wired up was this one uh, and the E key. But as we'll see uh, on this one, if I now flip it over, so let's start from here. 
We've got those pesky little LEDs uh, connected on. Uh, and they, as I say, they're a little bit tricky to hand solder, but quite possible to do. So what I did, I sold, put a little, little tiny blob of solder with some flux uh, on each of the four pads, and then I used tweezers to put the LEDs into position, uh, and then I used the soldering iron to reflow, and then cleaned up if I needed to with a desoldering braid. Um, obviously the, uh, the resistors uh, a lot of drama, as you can see, it's very pragmatic. I've put them on different sides based on uh, where it was easier at the time. We've got a 10 pin connector and we've got uh, our bunch of these uh, chips. So I carefully went through and thought I'd probed for continuity between every pair of pins to make sure I didn't have any bridges. Turns out the F and the space bar uh, keys pins were still bridged, but that was easy enough when you start using the keyboard and using the, uh, the Mega 65 on board, uh, on screen keyboard, I was actually able to see that uh, happening pretty easily and go, oh, that's okay, right. And then you know, again, a bit of flux, and not flux, um, desoldering braid uh, and fixing that up. But as we said, the E and the um, uh, left pointing arrow key were not wired up, so because I had this GPIO header, um, I have used some blue bodge wire to hook those up, and then I updated the schematic to move the GPIOs to the pins that, that those other keys should have gone on, so that electrically, this prototype will be compatible with the next revision uh, of the keyboard. So that's that, the PCB is just 1.6 mil thick. You could put a metal plate in with the key switches if you wanted, I haven't because again, I'm just being cheap and cheery, um, which is fine. So we can now start trying it out. Um, again, this isn't an ideal cable, we only need 10 pins on the header here, um, but that's okay. Uh, and you shouldn't hot plug this. Um, it's my fault if I blow it up. Uh, do. And reset for mega 65. So the first up, we can actually see that we have uh, a working uh, power LED, which is great. Um, I'm not sure why the caps lock. Lid is on to begin with. I thought I'd fix that, we'll find out. Um, but I'm just going to shade that power LED because it, it's turned out these LEDs are actually much brighter than they need to be. You can actually see it still <laughs> reflecting off the, uh, the cardboard box to give an idea of the brightness. But we can at least now see that that LED on the um, caps lock key is on. We can turn it off. Turn it on, and behavior that uh, we have on the existing keyboard if you hold it down. Ugh. It's a bit hard to do with camera angle, right? If I hold it down, you can see it actually goes back to what it was. So that's so that when you're using the um, caps lock key uh, as the turbo button, uh, that you can just hold it down and you don't have to then re tap the key after. Hey, Prowl7, um, you're asking, what are we developing with the Mega 65 today? We are developing the DIY, build-it-yourself uh, alternative keyboard, particularly for people who've got a, uh, a Nexus board or something like that, uh, or who just want to, uh, to try things out. Uh, likewise, if I come down here, here's our shift lock key. Again, camera angle's gonna be tricky for me. But again, you can see that that's toggling. Uh, and if we now blend display, so we can see I can type with this, if I toggle caps lock, uh, that that has the effect that we expect. You can see a bunch of keys are working. Now what we can do to make sure that all the keys are working, so I'm just going to use matrix mode to do this, set FFD3 6152 FF. Oh, that's interesting. 
I have to fix that. Somehow or another, the with this keyboard, the matrix mode, the typing is still going through to the machine underneath rather than through Ah, oh, but return. <laughs> or is it doing both? I think it's doing both, isn't it? trying to do is turn on the on-screen keyboard. So I'm not quite sure what I did there, um, causing grief. But what we want to see with here, and again, sorry, it's a little bit uh, uh, clipped. Oh, no, Prowse Aaron says, oh, I happen to have a Nexus board. Yeah, so I haven't added support to the core for this just yet, uh, but it will be quite feasible to do. And so anyone who would like to help build these once I do the revision to the, um, the PCB, that would actually be fantastic to, uh, uh, to help with the debugging. But so what I just want to show now is how I tested the keyboard, right? So we've got the on-screen keyboard turned on. I don't need any special software running. And you can see if I press the run stop, that lights up. You can see I can toggle caps lock and that lights up. Scroll lock. And so I can just go through all the keys Again, I'm not caring what the machine's doing underneath, but I'm verifying that all the keys work on this keyboard. And in fact, so the factory testing for the Mega 65s actually works in a similar kind of way where they actually, there's a, a test program that brings this up where they can actually make sure that every key is working on the keyboards. Yeah, you can see um, shift and shift lock because they're actually the same key um, that they both light up and you'll see a similar thing with the left and cursor up that uh, they actually do shift as well because it's actually how the keys work so we can see every key uh, is working on the keyboard so now for the party trick if I unplug Um, so it gets a bit confused while there's no keyboard plugged in. This is perfectly reasonable, right? Because it's like, no, oh, I don't know what's going on. Um, if I now plug in the original keyboard, and so these two use a different communications protocol to one another. Uh, we can see that it works. Stick. I won't go through all the keys again, but you, you get the idea that we can test it thoroughly that way. So I've made it so that the um, uh, we have support for both keyboards. Uh, again, if we decide that we want to use a keyboard with this protocol for production later on, we can. Um, but also just for people you know, building at home, then this is super fine, right? Uh, so the only other feature to the keyboard that we haven't verified with these, and I'll show it first with the original keyboard, uh, if I, I'm just going to use JTAG to clear the bitstream out of the machine and we see that we get the flashing blue lights uh, ambulance light pattern. Uh, very originally it was actually red and blue, more like an ambulance, uh, but to work around a power backflow issue through HDMI that would sometimes leave enough voltage backflowing to run the keyboard's FPGA, which is so low power, uh, that the red LEDs could actually light up because they also had a very low threshold voltage. And so you could power your Mega 65 off and then you would see, you know, hang on a minute, <laughs> why is the uh, the keyboard LED flashing red at me? Uh, so we, we worked around that. So now if I unplug that, and so normally you would see this uh, when you're loading uh, cores uh, or when you're um, uh, flashing things so because on the new keyboard it runs a little the protocol is different it's actually more resistant to this backflow voltage we can go back to having the red and the blue which I, I, as I say I think looks uh, much cooler um, so again if I load up a, a bitstream completely uh, that will stop once it's finished loading and there we go so, 
that's got both the uh, uh, keyboards working, and, you know, and we can I can switch between them as we need. As I say, you shouldn't switch between them while it's on. Uh, I'm just doing that sort of you know once off to uh, to show you. Uh, and we have full function of the keyboard, and so this is the the only things that I need to solve is that the, you know these. LEDs that I've chosen, I was worried they weren't going to be bright enough. They are gobsmackingly bright. Uh, so it might be that uh, we actually cut the current into them. Uh, so at the moment I'm using 130 ohm resistors on them. So it might be that we, you know, we drop to 220 ohm resistors or something to, uh, to reduce that brightness. Because if I kind of you know, hold that and look at it, um, without having a filter on the front. So that's the other thing at the moment, right? Is that the, the real keyboard has filters over the LEDs. Uh, and it's quite likely that if we add similar filters in, that, that will get the brightness down. So either way, we can adjust it with a resistor or we can you know, uh, put filters in uh, over the front. But we now have the keyboard working. So now there's just a few things that I need to do with this. I'm not sure if it's quite visible. Uh, the return key, I've just got a one and a half key on here with key because I accidentally didn't leave enough room for a, a two key and I need a two double width key that is. I also need to put the little support doohicks in, likewise the space bar at the moment. Uh, probably should just show on the bareboard. Right, so the return key should be a little bit further to the right. Um, only about uh, a quarter of an inch or something, uh, five mils or so, uh, but it needs, to, it needs to have the little spring holder things either side. And likewise down here, the space bar doesn't have the little spring things either side either. So I need to do that, and a couple of the holes that are out by a millimetre or two, again, it's just easier to, uh, to do the first revision to fit test everything. And so I'll make those changes and then I'll be ready to uh, order the next few uh, PCBs, pardon me, uh, to prototype. And hopefully they won't need any bodging, they won't need anything. It will just be a case of uh, assemble, solder everything. And uh, you know they'll just work uh, and that they'll fit uh, properly. So the uh, I did also test that the keyboard fits through uh, Omega 65 case. Again, if we decide to use these for uh, production or a, a derivative of it for production, uh, you know, we just, I mean, we just want to have it right anyway. Uh, there's no uh, reason to not do that little bit of extra effort to make it so that it, it really is a, an interchangeable part uh, with the Mega 65. Because it also means that if you need to repair your machine at some point in the future, uh, that that's quite uh, possible to do. So, yeah. That's pretty much that, I reckon. Um, if anyone wants to jump in with any last question, otherwise, I'll uh, sign out in a moment. Well, good. If not, anyway, everyone, you know where to find me on the, uh, the Discord server anyway, uh, which you can get to from mega65.org uh, in one of the, uh, uh, the pull down menus. Um, oh, so Prow7 is asking, did you finish off the floppy work? No, I haven't finished the high density floppy stuff. That's on my list. Uh, there's a few things ahead of it uh, in the queue at the moment, including uh, this keyboard uh, PCB and also an expansion PCB for the Mega 65 that uh, lets you have the missing ports on the machine. So, yeah, that's where that's up to. Ooh. Pardon me. Um, so yeah, I'll uh, catch folks back on Discord. See ya.